everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. This time around, we're going to talk about Nikon's new focus limiter feature that came with a ZH 3.0 firmware update and will likely make its way into other bodies as well. We'll cover what it is, when and how to use it, potential pitfalls, setup, and at the end of the video, some critical advice about using it with subject detection. As always, the advice here is geared towards wildlife photographers, but the concepts can apply to other situations as well. Let's dive right in. What's it for? The new focus limiter lets you define a custom autofocus range, telling the camera to only focus between two distances. For example, you might set it to focus between 3.5 and 9 meters, and I'll show you how to set that up in a moment. But first, why would you want to do this? The main reason is to speed up AF when your camera starts to hunt, or to keep it from locking onto the wrong thing, like a background or foreground. It's not something to use all the time, but it can be a huge help in specific situations. Say you're photographing birds at a feeder. They're always at about the same distance, but sometimes the camera jumps to the background. With the limiter, you can set a tight range around the feeder, and if the camera loses the bird, it'll snap right back instead of hunting all over the place and getting locked onto the background. It's fast and consistent, and I've tested this, and it works great. Or maybe you're dealing with brush in front of your subject. Set the near limit to just beyond the clutter and the camera won't even try to focus on it. Maybe you're shooting birds in flight. Set the far limit just before the background so the camera won't jump to infinity if it misses the bird. Combine that with a near limit and you can shrink the hunting range, making reacquisition much quicker. Of course, you can use the limiter more traditionally as well, just restricting the near or far range as needed. If you don't set a near limit, the camera uses the lens's minimum focus distance. If you don't set a far limit, it defaults to infinity. Bottom line, use the limiter when focus keeps going to the wrong place repeatedly. If it's just an occasional miss though, you're better off tweaking your AF area motor technique. Setting it up. Before we dive into setup, which is actually pretty easy, let's run through a few things you'll want to know first. This only works with Nikon Z series lenses, not adapted glass. Also, if your lens has a physical focus limiter switch, it must be set to the full position or the feature won't work. Each time you change to a different lens and input a set of focus limiter values, the focus limiter resets for your other lenses. For example, say you have a 600 PF mounted and set the limiter values. Then you mount a 400 millimeter, but this time you don't use the limiter. When you mount the 600 PF again, you'll still have your same focus limiter values. However, had you set the values for the 400 millimeter and then mounted the 600 PF again, the values would be zeroed out. I know, it's confusing. Basically, just confirm your limiter values anytime you mount a new lens and you're good. Adding or removing teleconverters does not reset the limiter. The camera also retains the limiter settings for the currently attached lens, even if you power off or remove the battery. There have been reports of the limiter not working in prioritized viewfinder modes one and two, but it actually does. You just have to keep your eye to the viewfinder the entire time. If you remove your eye, the camera drops back into regular shooting mode and it can be kind of confusing at first. If you are in a prioritized viewfinder mode and want to use the rear LCD instead, just pull it out slightly and it'll activate. Alternatively, you can switch to automatic display switch mode. Just press the monitor mode button on the side of the viewfinder to toggle through the options. If you want to reset your distances, press the delete button while you're in the focus limiter setup. Finally, custom setting banks all have their own focus limiter section, so if you go from one to another, your current limiter settings won't follow. Also, note that this is for custom setting banks, not for the more common photo shooting banks. Before we jump into setup, I want to mention that this update will soon be in my Z8, Z9 wildlife setup guide. The guide walks you through all the wildlife settings I use for my Nikon Z8 and Z9 cameras and how I use those settings in the field. The videos I put out only scratch the surface. If you want to get the most from your Z8 or Z9, that book is a must have. Let's go ahead and set some distances. I'll demonstrate using the menus first, then show you how to assign it to a button. You'll find the limiter under the focus menu listed as focus limiter setting. Once you're in, the first option is simply on and off. Go ahead and turn it on. Next, go down to the limit range setting. When you enter this, the camera switches to a live view of the scene. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see options for setting your near and far focus limits. We can set our distances in a few different ways, and of course, the distances you set will vary based on the scene. First, we can use the command dials to set the distance. The front command dial is gonna set your far distance, and the rear command dial is for the near distance. 
We can also set our distances by focusing on the spots we want for our far near distances. When in focus limiter setup mode, a half press of the shutter release will set the far distance and a half press of the AF on button will set the near distance. Note that even if your AF on button is normally customized for something else, it'll still work as described when you're setting this up. Once you have everything set, hit OK to lock it in. Those are the basics, but let me show you how I set this up in real life, and there are a few scenarios here. The first is if you have areas available to focus on for setting your distances. For example, with my fake gulls, I can focus on the grass in front of them using the AF on button, setting my near distance. Next, I focus on the grass behind them using a half press of the shutter release. That sets the far distance. As long as the targets stay in that range, the camera will be able to lock focus and it won't stray outside of that range if there are distractions. If I want to fine tune those distances, I can use the front and rear dials to increase or decrease the distance. You'll get 0.1 meter increments up to 20 meters, then 1 meter increments up to 50 meters, and then 5 meter increments after that. Another option I like. Turn the focus ring while you're half pressing the shutter release button or pressing the AF on button. This gives you manual focus override. I enable focus peaking so I can see exactly where the focus is landing and I have peaking set to red in this example. Once I've dialed in my range, I just hit OK to confirm. I find this visual way of doing it a little bit easier sometimes. So what if there are no actual targets to focus on? For instance, I want to be about a half meter either side of this bird feeder, but at those distances, there's just empty air. What's the workaround? Easy. While in the focus limiter setup, use the AF on button to focus on the feeder and then subtract off 0.5 meters using that rear command dial. Next, focus on the feeder with a half press of the shutter release, and then using the front dial, add 0.5 meters to the distance. Hit OK, and your range is set. What about setting the limiter to keep it off the background, you know, like when you're doing birds in flight? We use a similar setup to the feeder scenario we just did, this time using a half press of the shutter release. Focus on the background and then back off a bit using that front dial. Usually 10 or 15 meters is a good starting point. You can use more if the target is farther from the background, less if it's closer, but 10 to 15 meters is a good place to start for most scenes. Yellow numbers. When the distance numbers turn yellow, it's the camera's way of warning you that focus limiter accuracy may be reduced at those distances. In some cases, it's not maybe a big deal, but it's something to be aware of. You'll see yellow numbers appear under a couple of conditions. The first is if you set a distance that's below the lens's minimum focus distance, like if you have a lens that can focus down to four meters and you set the near distance for 3.8 meters. You'll also see yellow numbers at longer distances. This is likely related to the incremental steps used by the focusing group of your lens. As you get closer to infinity, the lens adjusts focus in larger, coarser steps, so the camera can't set limits as precisely. It's also connected to depth of field. At longer distances, tiny changes in focus matter less, so the limiter reflects that looser tolerance. In fact, you'll notice that longer lenses can go out much farther before the numbers turn yellow while shorter lenses hit that threshold sooner since at a given distance, depth of field is deeper and focus steps are larger with those wider lenses. In short, it's best to stick with the white numbers when you can. Faster access. If you use this feature frequently, rummaging through the menu system isn't very efficient. My advice is to either add it to my menu or assign it to a programmable button, depending on how often you use it. My menu is a good choice for the occasional user and it avoids the accidental activation that can happen when you inadvertently tap a customized button. Of course, the customized button is faster, allowing you to turn the limiter on and off with a short press and get this, you can program it with a long press. Plus, if something happens outside the limiter range, it's quicker to tap a button and shut it off than to go back to my menu. I like the custom button option myself, but I'll show you setup for both. Okay, so let's start with My Menu. We're going to go down to the My Menu icon there on the bottom left. We're going to select Add Items from that menu. We're going to press the right side of our multi-selector. We're going to go to Custom Settings menu on that list. And once again, we're going to press the right side of our multi-selector. Then we're going to go to Focus. And once again, we're going to press the right side of the multi-selector. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to A16 Focus Limiter Setting. So you have to scroll all the way down to that. I happen to already have been on it, so I'm going to just click OK, and that's going to allow me to choose the position of where that's going to be in my menu. If you only have this in your My Menu option, just hit OK and you're done. 
but I'm going to use the multi selector and put this under, you see that little bar there, under format memory card and hit OK. And then it is in my menu and I am ready to go ahead and use it. That's all there is to it. So this time we're gonna go ahead and program it to a custom button. In my case, I'm gonna put on the lens function button, but there's a lot of buttons that support this, so use whichever one that you want. It works exactly the same no matter which button you're programming it to. So what we're gonna do for this is to go to the custom settings menu. I'm gonna to go to controls, and I'm gonna go ahead and give that a click. That'll bring up the controls menu, and what you want is F2, custom control shooting. Once that's highlighted, press the right side of your multi-selector, and that's gonna take you into the setup for this. And you're gonna go down to whichever button you want. Again, I use the lens function button. I think that's kind of a handy place to have it, but if you want it someplace else, certainly use that button instead. I'm going to give that a click. It's already set there, so it makes it a little bit easier, but you can see what it looks like here on the menu. And it's up towards the top. If you look at the scroll bar there, we're almost at the top of the menu there. So if you're trying to figure out where this is, this is what you're looking for and that's where it is. Once you have it figured out, once you have it highlighted, just hit OK and it'll be programmed to that button. So as a quick demo here, when I long press that button, you'll see that the option for setting my farthest and nearest distance comes up. And once I have that set, I can hit OK or I can just hit delete to reset those values. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to reset those values. And there we go. And then if I wanted to set my nearest distance, I can go ahead and do that like this. There we go. I have my nearest set. Maybe I leave the farthest alone on this one and then hit OK when I have it all set. Once you have that set, just a short tap on that button will bring up the focus limiter. And you can see it says focus limit up there in the upper right hand corner of the viewfinder. Press the button again to turn that off. That's all there is to it. Really, really simple and it avoids the whole menu. And if you're using it a lot, this is the option that I recommend. This is one I'm going to use. Cautionary notes. Let's wrap up with a few important cautionary notes. First, don't forget it's turned on. I've seen so many people miss close-up shots because they forgot they had a physical focus limiter switch set on their actual physical lens. And this new digital version is like those old switches on steroids. If your camera suddenly won't focus, the focus limiter option should be the first thing you check. Also, be careful that your subject doesn't drift just outside your preset range. It's easy to think you've got focus when, in reality, your subject is barely beyond the limit and you end up with a soft shot. Second, be careful using this in situations where something exciting might happen outside your preset range. Let's say you've got the limiter set up for a bee eater perch, and then, what do you know, a lion wanders in just beyond your focus range. Oops, you don't want to miss a great shot like that. This is a great reason to assign the focus limiter to a custom function button. That way you can quickly toggle it on and off without digging through the menu system. Third, be careful with the focus limiter and subject detection. You might assume subject detection respects your limiter range. It does not. Subject detection can and often will identify and even prioritize subjects that are outside of your set focus range. For instance, the front gall is within the limiter range and the back one is not. Here, you can see subject detection is actually drawing a gray box around both my primary target in front and the one that's out of range in the back. Normally, subject detection will still grab onto the front target, so it's not a big deal. But if it loses the target, it can get hung up on the back one that's out of range and ignore the one that's still within your focus limit range. Still. Keep in mind that subject detection only works if it can recognize a subject. So if the background target you don't want is far enough out of focus, either due to distance or depth of field, then subject detection will ignore it and will only go for your main target. In addition, this behavior also ties in to how you're using your AF areas. For instance, auto AF tends to favor targets that are sharp and more or less towards the center of the frame. In this case, using auto AF, I can keep it off the back bird by simply keeping my intended target pre-focused and towards the center. I could also use 3D AF to specifically target the bird I want, or I could target my bird with one of the wide AF areas. Now, that's not to say 3D or wide won't jump to the back bird if the first is lost and it leaves a frame and it is within range of that AF area, but you'll have more control so it's not as likely. Overall, with wildlife, it's only isolated very specific scenarios where the focus limiter and subject detection might cause issues, but 
Still something to be aware of, just in case. Fourth, this is one of those features I could totally see people using when they don't need it and causing missed shots because they were messing with it when they should be shooting or because something happened outside the limiter range. Often, a more appropriate AF area is a better choice than the focus limiter. For example, in this case, I'm in auto AF and it's getting hung up on the foreground. I could use the limiter and restrict the focus zone to my subject distance, but that's not necessary. Instead, I'd just switch to 3D and punch through the obstructions to the target. So there you have it. And before we end the video, I want to give a special thanks to Horshack from the DPR forums and the BCG forums for his help with this video. His testing and insights were incredibly helpful. Also, if you want more in-depth tips like this, make sure you check out my Z8 and Z9 setup guide. I'll put a link for it in the description area below, and I'll try to pin it there in the first comment as well. I think you'll find it incredibly useful. And if this video helped you out, hit those like and subscribe buttons and let me know in the comments how you plan to use the focus limiter or if you plan to use it at all. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.